So there is an emphasis, especially in hard times, on what du'as should we make, what prayers should we make, what supplications should we make, which ones are the best ones for this situation and that situation. And of course, you know, we start off with this uh, idea, and this is this is an established fact that the best du'a is the one that's from the heart, the best supplication is from the heart. And when we talk about the prayers of the pious, no one is more pious than the prophets, and therefore the prayers of the prophets are the most pious prayers. And there's a very beautiful narration that I'll share with you all today, and it has a great story uh, behind it. It's a narration that's narrated in Muslim Imam Ahmad, as well as a bazaar. It's an authentic narration, and it involves some of the most beloved companions of the Prophet And it's narrated that Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, radiallahu anhu, who uh, is the one narrating this, he says that we were in the era of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, meaning he was the Khalifa. And I went to the masjid and I saw Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala anhu sitting in the masjid. He said, so I went up to him and he said, not only did we make eye contact, he said that his eyes captured me entirely, like he had a blank stare and he was looking at me, staring at me directly. And I was right in front of him. And while he was staring at me, I said to him, Assalamu alaikum. And he didn't respond to me. So he said it was really strange to me. And I was very offended because I went into the masjid. Uthman radiallahu anhu was sitting there. And we know who Uthman is, this amazing, noble companion of the Prophet sallam, who is extremely shy, extremely sweet, extremely humble. And you have Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, the, the uncle of the Prophet sallam, so noble, saying to him, Assalamu alaikum, and Uthman completely ignored me. And it's not like he didn't see me, he said he was actually staring at me. He, I, I completely filled up his sight. He said, so I went to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Khalifa, to ask him about what happened and to, you know, to complain to him basically, to get some context. He said, uh, I went to Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu and I said to Umar bin Khattab, Salaamu alaikum, peace be on to you. And he said that uh, something very strange just happened. He said, uh, has anything happened new in Islam? Hal hadatha fil Islam uh, And he said, I asked him twice, has anything new happened in Islam? Meaning, is there some sort of new ruling in Islam that I'm not aware of or something that, that, that just... Uh, you know, that could make sense of the situation that just happened to me, Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, no. He said, then how come uh, I passed by Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, maratu bi Uthman fil masjid, I passed by Uthman, a man like Uthman, in, out of all places, in the masjid, and he said, and I made contact, it's not eye contact, it's not like he didn't see me, I mean, he looked right at me, and I was full uh, in front of him, I filled his entire sight, and I gave him salam and he didn't respond to that salam. So Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said that's strange, so he called for Uthman. So he says to Uthman in front of uh, Sa'ad, he says, why is it that you did not respond to the salam of your brother? Why did you not respond to the peace, the greeting of peace, the salam of your brother? And Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, what are you talking about? So Sa'ad says, I passed right by you in the masjid and said salam to you and you looked at me and I said salam to you and you didn't respond to my salam. So Uthman radiallahu anhu said, that didn't happen. He said, you did not say salam to me and you didn't even come up to me. I didn't see you today. <laughs> so Sa'ad radiallahu anhu says, uh, حتى حلف وحلفتو. I mean, he said until he took an oath and I took an oath. So you've got Umar al-Khattab who's an extremely fair man, uh, just man, sitting with Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas and Uthman ibn Affan, these two great companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and both of them are swearing to the opposite thing. They're both taking an oath to the opposite thing. Sa'ad saying, I saw you and I said salam to you. Uthman radiallahu anhu saying that you never came up to me and you never said salam to me. So it's a perplexing situation. So as they're in the midst of the situation, uh, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu said, I started to paint the picture to Uthman, where he was sitting, how I came up to him, uh, when I spoke to him. And I, as I started to remind him of where he was sitting and what happened, Uthman radiallahu anhu suddenly was taken aback and he said, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek forgiveness from Allah and I turn to him in repentance. I seek forgiveness from Allah and I turn to him in repentance. He said to Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, I'm so sorry. I was, I was trying to think of this dua, this supplication, 
the Prophet ﷺ uh, said that this is a dua that no person would say except that it would remove every uh, hardship. And he said, I never think of this dua or this dua never comes to me except that it completely removes my sight uh, or, or it completely overcomes, overwhelms my sight, my heart and, and everything about me. Okay, so it takes over me when I think of this du'a. This is a, a supplication that when I start pondering, how perfect are you, free from all imperfections, and how imperfect am I? Inni kuntu min al-walimin. I was from the wrongdoers. When he said that, the Prophet wasallam said, and this is the most important part of the hadith after the du'a. He said wasallam, لَمْ يَدْعُ بِهَا مُسْلِمْ رَبَّهُ فِي شَيْءٍ قَتْ no Muslim will call upon his Lord with that prayer at, at all. Qat. Okay, so there is no exception to this. So if someone starts thinking, well, I'm not Yunus Islam, I'm not worthy of my dua being answered, I'm not. The Prophet said, no believer will call upon Allah with that prayer except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is illa stajaba lahu, except that Allah will answer his prayers. No Muslim will call upon Allah with that prayer except that Allah will answer his prayers. Think about that for a moment. Now we've talked about the different ways that Allah answers your prayers, but no Muslim will ever add into their prayer or call upon Allah with La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min alamin, except that Allah will remove all of their distress and answer their prayers. Now let's talk about this for a moment, inshallah ta'ala, because it's a very profound thing that the Prophet is giving to us. Number one, again, don't sit there and think, well, perhaps I'm not worthy. All right. The Prophet ﷺ said, no Muslim will call upon Allah with that prayer. Also remember that when Allah tells us the story of Jonah, the story of Yunus salam, Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And just like that, we also rescue the believers. So just like we rescue Yunus salam, we rescued the Prophet Jonah, كَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ That's how we rescue the believers as well. With their words, with that expression, with that sincerity. Yunus salam represents a person in the lowest of low, calling upon Allah, acknowledging His majesty and His glory with absolutely no imperfection. So Yunus alayhi salam is at his lowest point, and he calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as Ibn Mas'ud anhu said, in the darkness of the night, in the darkness of the ocean, in the darkness of the belly of that whale, Yunus alayhi salam calls out from the bottom of the ocean, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al It's an extremely profound narration that the Prophet sallallahu is giving to us. And I want to talk about a few things with this dua that are, that's usually not spoken about. Number one, Yunus alayhi salam did not uh, ask Allah to be saved, but by his pure expression to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his pure thana, his pure praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah saved him anyway. Allah rescued him anyway. Yunus did not ask Allah to remove him from the belly of the whale. He did not ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him in this life. He called upon Allah asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And that's because the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever sticks to istighfar, whoever sticks to seeking forgiveness, Allah will take care of all of their affairs anyway. Okay, Allah will take care of all of their affairs anyway. And so he didn't even have to call upon Allah and ask Allah for the specific uh, saving and rescue that he was asked, it was just a complete comprehensive, oh Allah, you are perfect, I am imperfect. You were always generous to me, and I am consistently deficient in my responsibility to you, right? The acknowledgement, Abu, and, and you know, you think about Sayyid al-Istighfar, the, the, the master of seeking forgiveness, the Prophet said, the chief of istighfar, the chief of seeking forgiveness, Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu bi dhambi. Right? Admitting Allah's blessing upon you and admitting your shortcoming towards Him. Okay? La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu min al-walameen. So no one is, is excluded from this because كَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَمْ يَدْعُوا Muslim And no Muslim, no believer, no mu'min, no one calls upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, period. With this dua, except that their dua is answered. How Allah answers it, that's a different story. Right? But there is nothing that you could call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more pure and more beautiful than with this dua. And the Prophet said, uh, you know, he did not say, let this be your only dua. Add it to your dua. Let it be frequent on your tongue. And at the same time, add it to your dua. And the Prophet mentioned to us to keep our tongues moist with la ilaha illallah and all of, all of the variants of la ilaha illallah. 
سو لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا اله الا انت سبحانك اني كنت من الظالمين you start from the place of la ilaha illallah and then you go to the next part and this is the dua of the one who is in pain this is the dua of the one who is in the lowest of low this is the dua of the one who is anxious and no one makes this dua sincerely except that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer it and remove that which they're calling upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for